We are live. We're live. I just messed with the camera. I'm going to put this guy in here. Who's this guy in here? Stormtrooper. Stormtrooper, follow on the ship. My kids got me this for my birthday. A little Lego. You know what's nice? Best found out? They're old enough now. They put it together themselves for me, and I don't have to put the things together anymore for them. That was kind of fun, but I like watching them build the stuff. Anyway, hey, good morning. It's Saturday. This is the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show, and I am Greg Master Scrum Master and Agile Coach, and this is our 414th episode, and it's about 7.30 a.m. on a Saturday. Oh, it is a Saturday, so yeah, it's not 5.30. So like, as soon as I got up, cats are trying to wake me up. Feed me. I was like, really? It's 5 o'clock. Feed me. It's 5 o'clock. They didn't care. They didn't care with Saturday. Anyway, hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Um, this is the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show where we talk about Agile and Scrum in a tactical and practical way so that we can bring value to the customer. Get home to family and friends at decent hours, not working 60, 80 hours a week, and have some fun along the way. Right? Compare life fun, fun in the office, fun at home, and mix it all up in a big pile <laughs> anyway hope you're doing well it's good it's saturday um two things i want to talk about i'm going to share a, a total screw up i did yesterday but i want to say you know it's about sharing the good stuff with the team as well as the bad stuff sharing um, fun and failure okay and we're going to talk about the failure part, part first because then we'll talk no talk about the fun part Fun failure, it's the same thing. And then we'll work into the failure side of the, the, of the topic for today. So yesterday, I screwed up big time, big time, big time. Um, kids are going to school. It's awesome. It's great. Uh, they're riding the bus home. They love the bus. Eddie is a big bus fanatic. I mean, we have SEPTA. I mean, we got the train thing, right? He loves buses, trains, subways, airplanes, anything transportation level, his favorite thing. Anyway, so they're all half days this week, and I totally forgot. I'm thinking, oh, okay, they're not getting done until like almost 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 2.30 or something like that. Go pick them up. Uh, no, they got done early, and, and so I was out getting some stuff for the house. I actually got to drive out to the store for a change without, why do we have to go out? I don't want to go. I want to play in my electronics. So I got to the store. I'm out there. I'm debating with myself. So... There was a hobby shop open, so I get because there's really not a lot of model rocket stuff at Walmart anymore. You got to go to a Michaels or some kind of hobby shop. It's over in Jersey. It's debating to go. I'm like thinking, okay, I can go. It's only 15 minutes away. Um, but you know what? I was thinking greedy. The fun part is picking out the model rockets, right, to do for our next sprint. And. Just like in the office where there's some people out there who do do the fun exploration with software coding, go into the reaches of the coding capability, exploring new capability and new that. And they go do all that stuff and then they give it to the team. Well, that's no fun, right? Teams like you want to have a diverse, well-rounded team. Some people think we just want you to code. Don't take your head off the screen. We want you done your coding all the day. Don't do anything else. Just go, 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 go. That's what they want, right? Um, but that's not what you want from your team. You want to have a diverse team because as they explore other ideas, they get better and better. They come up with better ways to develop the code because if their head's always down into the, to, to the keyboard, they'll never know anything good that, around them. So I changed my mind. I said, you know what? That's the fun part of doing the sprinting stuff together as a team is the fun stuff is picking this stuff out and, and, and exploring what's available for the next sprint. So I came home. On my way home, I realized, I said, oh, crap. I forgot about the kids. The poor bus driver drove around the block like twice. Oh, I was bailing around cars and everything to get home to pick up the kids. Uh, that was a screw up. So that was my screw up. But you know what saved me? Was the fact that I decided that I want my team to have fun. I want my team to participate in the fun part of developing and doing a sprint and the fun part of picking what to do next. 
I didn't want to pick it for them. And there's so many teams out there where I have lead techs and I have architects and I have UX people, business people. They get to interface with the customer, learn what they want, get that adrenaline from experiencing that new stuff and, and seeing what's out there and exploring what's possible. You know, so many lead people and, and organizations take that away from the developers and development doesn't come from they everybody wants to build it you don't get paid a lot but they want to build games right but they want to explore and see what's possible out there and that's the fun part about doing any job to be honest with you if you do the same job every day non-stop and you don't get to explore and see try doing things and interface with the customer it's not going to be any fun so what saved me is the fact that i realized this is you know what Greg, get the kids, you know, go pick out what you want to do for the next sprint with the kids, with the family, with the team, uh, bring them along, have them pick it out, enjoy watching them explore, you know, when you're, when you're a senior person, you're meant it's fun watching people explore. So the first thing we want to say is have, let the team have some fun. Don't always work them down. So the second thing, and that was my failure, right? So we said, have the team have fun. I failed because I forgot about the kids <laughs> and coming home with the boss. I'm such a bad dad. So, but everything worked out good. They're home. Everybody was fine. Bus driver was nice enough to hang out in front of the house with the lights blanket. I'm like, oh crap, I'm screwed. <laughs> but anyway, so, so that was the fun, the failure. Now the work failure. So many scrum masters out there, so many people, so many managers, I'll have to say, so many moms out there in the world, both men and women are moms. I don't want my team to get hurt. You know what? You got to let your team fail. I had multiple activities of that, and I was finally got a scrum master to say, I am not updating your task for you and Jira. You all have to update your tasks. Whether you do it or not, and if you fail, that's your fault. It's not my fault. And people have to take ownership. I was like, they are grown individuals, and they need to learn to fail. Because once they fail, they go, okay, this is my responsibility. There's someone not going to clean up my crap for me behind me. I have to do this. Your team will succeed and produce so much better. And you, as a scrum master, won't stress out. I have so many scrum masters. This worry so much about the impact on that. They're grown individuals. Like I had to tell the person, look, send the report out. If they're not putting time in on their work, it, it goes out to the team and goes to the manager. Tell the manager, say, hey, work with them. You know, now you build them. You know, even though there's the product owner and there's the team and the scrum master, there is managers. There's people that, that control whether or not the person stays there in the company or not. You should not be protecting your team from the managers. If the team is now or individuals aren't doing their job, you need you need to work with the manager to either get them better or make a decision. And they have to understand that sometimes people do not do anything unless the manager who controls their paycheck says, What are you doing? And why aren't you putting your hours in the system? I'm not a big hour guy, but if you this is what you need and you need to track what's going on because that's how you operate then you need to do it, you know, and if there's teams not doing it, what are they doing for 40 hours? One, I, my measurement is more about getting stuff done. I don't really care about hours. There's a lot of corporate places like hours. We're going to measure hours. I want stuff done. If you're getting stuff done, I don't really give a crap. <laughs> I really don't. If I see the stuff moving across the board, don't care about hours. One, I would to be honest with you. But when I don't see stuff moving across the board, then I start looking at hours and then I go, what are you doing? And if you're not doing it, you know, sooner or later, I got to protect the team from you, right? There's times when you got to protect the team from an individual on the team that's pulling the rest of the team down. Um, I've seen teams where, you know, a couple people aren't doing squat and the other teams are just working overtime to get everything working. Well, that's not fair to those people. You got to protect those people too. You can always pick about the people who, who maybe they have a problem and you got to reach out and find out the problem is that they don't want to work with that. Way. Then, then if you don't want to work with me, I can't help you. And sooner or later, you're going to get kicked off the team. It's, I can help you. We can work together. We can make it better. You can go. So that's where you got to let the team fail. You got to let people, individuals, if they're not doing their job, keeping up their, 
they're part of the deal. Um, you gotta let them fail, and you gotta let experience failure. And it was funny. Um, I'm listening to one scrum master, and the person's like, um, "Well, you know what? They didn't get stuff done. They didn't update the fields. I'm just moving the. We're just gonna move the whole entire story to the next sprint, and they're just not gonna get any credit whatsoever for the sprint, any points, unless all the work for those stories are done." And I'm like, "Yes." Finally, you're getting it because you know what's going to happen? Management is going to come down on their asses and say, what the F are you doing? <laughs> because you've been trying all your best to get them to, to close out stories, get stuff done, make it smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, sometimes these teams just don't work it. Sometimes you have to let them experience failure. You can't hide it. Your job is not to hide the problems. Your job is to expose the problems. Not in a mean way, but expose them, right? So you can move on and get better as a group. So that's what I have today. Please give us a thumbs up if you like it. We are going to work on doing the next sprint. I don't know what the topic is. Like I said yesterday, I screwed up, and but I, the, I did the right thing. I made back and said, team, I want you to pick what we do next. So my kids, we're going to go out today. And we're going to go find a hobby shop somewhere. <laughs> There ain't many of them left in the States, to be honest with you. In the big city, there's nothing. And uh, to figure out what our next uh, sprint experiment shall be. Anyway, thumbs up. Ring the little bell. If you want to get notices when we do some videos, when we go do, do a hobby thing or something, we'll post it up. And uh, you have a pleasant weekend. See you tomorrow, Sunday. And we'll keep going. All right. Take care. Have some fun with the family and your friends. And take out, go outside if you can. And good luck to the people in California, man. Places burning up, red sky. And I wish you the best of luck. Take care. Bye. See ya. See ya.